So that was a clip from Kyle Ballari, mm -hmm. who's the Senior Director of Game Production and Broadcast Services with True North Sports and Entertainment. Uh, that would be the Winnipeg Jets talking about the uh, tonight, talking really about tonight, their home opener against Carolina Hurricanes at 7 p.m. Now, the WSO, when uh, they were asked to commission this piece, there's a quote here from Alexander Micklethwaite. I just wanted to say, the Jets told us they wanted something epic, and we immediately thought of Sean Pierce. I don't think we can describe his music as anything other than epic. That was Alexander Micklethwaite. And uh, Sean Pierce is in the studio. Just a little bit about him. He's a graduate of the Berklee College of Music in Boston. He studied at the New England Conservatory, attended Berklee uh, on scholarship. He majored in film scoring and is a recipient of the Doug Tim Professional Writing Division Award. He's written for a TV shows, uh, many acclaimed ones such as The Bridge, Motive, and Haven. He's worked on over 200 albums, earning him a Grammy nomination, five Juno Awards, 22 Juno no nominations, two West uh, WCMAs, and 12 WCMA nominations. And I'm out of breath now, so I just want to welcome into the studio and welcome back to Winnipeg, Sean. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's a yeah. pleasure to have you. Now, I, I definitely want to talk to you uh, about this, how this all came together. But first, you have connections to Winnipeg. Why don't you let our listeners know what your connections to Winnipeg are? Some of them may know, some of them may not know. Yeah, I do have connections here, and I've spent uh, a lot of time here, and I've I lived here full time for about six years, and I still go back and forth from California to Winnipeg as much as possible, and have a lot of great friends and family, and uh, colleagues here that mm -hmm. uh, that I come and, and visit and work with on a regular basis. So, what was your what was your time spent here doing in Winnipeg? Still doing film composing? It and was film composing, TV yeah. mostly. TV. My my background is on is in television. I've done a couple of films, but I'm mostly known in the world of visual media as a television composer. Mm -hmm. And Winnipeg has a very vibrant film and television scene, and I was fortunate to have become part of that the Winnipeg television and film community when I moved here in 2006. And then Hollywood beckoned. <laughs> yes, well, I'd always worked back See, and forth. Hollywood, Winnipeg, Hollywood, yeah, Winnipeg. I know absolutely. it was a, probably a well, tough choice. <laughs> the world has become flatter and smaller, as we know, due yeah. to the information age and technology. And I, I definitely was a part of that, where, I, where in my world, I'm able to work from wherever on whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, geography was taken out of the equation when technology became, uh, became so effective. Mm -hmm. So what brought you down to Hollywood? Was there some one particular thing that you were hired to do or? I was always, I always worked back and forth for many years since the, since I got out of college in the mid nineties, I worked back and forth between LA and Vancouver mostly. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was, I, I work on productions that were based mostly in Vancouver, but that were connected in some way to Los Angeles and that was usually through composers who were in Los Angeles working on a show that was finishing or posting or mixing in in Vancouver and the company that I was working with in my role was uh, one of music editor where I worked with the composers and was their support their music support in Vancouver while they while their productions were going on there so I got a lot of exposure to Hollywood composers uh, Hollywood producers and going to school in the States and understanding the world of commercial music and commercial music for visual media, that's the epicenter of the world. And I thought maybe one day I might be there, but I was extremely happy working in Vancouver and mm -hmm. was extremely happy working in Winnipeg. I, I think that uh, my, my bottom line was always, if I were to get a full-time series get hired on a full-time project, I would make the move full-time. And that's essentially what happened in 2012. Mm -hmm. So I had a, a, a pretty nice base of friends and colleagues and support there, but I, I said I'll only do it if I, if I got a, a full-time series where I had to be there, and that happened. And that show was called The Bridge, and it was on FX networks, and there's still reruns of it here in Canada. Mm -hmm. And it was a great show, and it was, it was right on the, I wouldn't say it was on the cusp, but it was right firmly placed in the middle of this boutique cable revolution that we all get to enjoy now this this really quality progressive television mm -hmm. it was part of that and i was thrilled to be part of that that movement on a show that got got a lot of press artistically mm -hmm. so i it, i made the move and i've uh i've made it my home uh, 
physically, but there's a lot of there's so many roots here in Winnipeg and in Canada, and I grew up in Thunder Bay, and this is a very familiar part of the world to me. And like I say, it's not it's not like it's forgotten. Winnipeg is a, is still very much a huge part of my life. Okay, let's just end it there. <laughs> done. Okay. No, I'm just joking. Yeah, go Jets, go. <laughs> Bye. No, so so so. <laughs> I want to know when you first got the call about this particular Jets commission. First of all, do you remember when you got the call? And also, what were you, what was your first thought? I do remember, and it was, well, I've been working on the on this project for about half a year now. So it was in the spring. Yeah, it was early in the spring, March, mm-hmm. maybe, end of March. And JF from, from the WSO called me, and he and I have been friends for many years and I admire his abilities as a as he's he's just he's an incredible administrator but he's also has an, an incredible artistic flair and a real gift for promotion and putting the right people with the with the right people and he and I had had some some uh, connections in other projects previously and he had told me that what True North was up to and that they were thinking about producing this video and they wanted to incorporate the WSO and feature the WSO in original composition for this series for, for the, for the uh, video that would home, would, would open every home game mm-hmm. and that they were considering me as a composer. And I just said, yes, you know, I, I've <laughs> learned to say yes to everything anyway. Yeah. And then learn in to my do world, it I say yes to everything, <laughs> but this was really easy to say yes to. Uh, and I was thrilled that they think of me and I was, I was honored that they, that they think of me for this. Um, so I, I said, yes, immediately. I said, well, I can do this and I want to do this and I want to, and I'll start this afternoon. Mm -hmm. And there was some, some negotiation and figuring out the, the administrative details of it. And then we, um, uh, I moved into meeting with Kyle at Mm -hmm. True North and immediately hit it off with Kyle and his team over there. Very bright, very energetic, very ambitious, creative people. And that's right in my world. I work for producers every day. That's what I do. So this, I worked for these producers. They're just in a different genre. And it's at a genre that I'm not familiar with. I mean, video game production, production for national hockey league games is, that's a whole world unto itself. Mm -hmm. And I was super impressed with these guys and we started a creative talk about what we were up to and what this was going to be. So I just wanted to mention I'm in the studio with Sean Pierce. He's in town from Hollywood and he's in town because the Jets are having their opening uh, game tonight of their season and he was commissioned by the WSO to write the new theme song for the Winnipeg Jets. It's going to be You'll see it unveiled tonight at the Jets game, and it'll be every home game they're going to play this video that he wrote the music for, and it's unveiled tonight. Uh, they're doing it about, uh, I'll give you the details afterwards. So what, what, what sort of direction did they give you? I mean, were you, were you, uh, did they tell you anything about the video, or they just said, we want an epic piece of music, and you had to come up with an epic piece of music? They told me a lot about the video, which okay. for me was crucial, because that's what I do. I, I'm very comfortable writing music that goes along with something else. I'm very comfortable being part of something. Mm -hmm. That's the world that I am am comfortable in and that's the world that I quite frankly signed up for. So I, I am not the composer that's known for writing concert music. You know, I'd love to get commissioned by an orchestra to write some music for music's sake for real, but that hasn't happened for me yet. I'm, I maybe (laughs) I've tried before and no one takes me seriously because I'm a TV composer and that's fine. Um, because I'm c- very comfortable within my medium um, of writing music that supports something, that works in support, in conjunction with. So mm-hmm. that's where I was uh, most, that, that, that's what intrigued me the most right at the beginning when we started the creative collaboration between myself and True North. I wanted to know everything I could possibly know what they were thinking about because they were just starting their creative process for the visual part of this at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I wanted as much information as I could possibly get. And they were great. The the storyboard concepts and we talked storyboard and concept for probably a month and a half before I even started writing anything substantial that I sent to them 
to start getting it to mm-hmm. based on what we had talked about. I hadn't sent them anything. We talked. We I, I took a long time to try and come up with something that would that would speak. And this, everyone is calling it a theme song per se. Same, and, yeah. You know, and I, 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 that's not quite accurate. It's it really is theme music that goes with visuals. So this video is in three parts and it, it moves kind of traditionally through three movements of starts out a little bit slower, gets a little faster and then gets really fast and more aggressive. And that's as you much know, as we're going to find out it, about it. That's about as much we're going to find out because I haven't seen the final video either. <laughs> Just like everybody else. I haven't seen it. I'm excited to see it myself. Yeah, that's right. You get to but see it tonight for the first time. I do. You obviously have heard yeah. the music. You yeah, wrote the, music, heard the and music and the final cut, but yeah, it, intimately familiar with the music. So, uh, yeah, I was really, uh, I was really encouraged by, by the process of, of the creative process with true North and the producers and figuring out what resonated with them because they do this every day for every game. They know what they want. And we're also, they were also really good at being able to convey them conveyed in music terms as well. And I always say to producers, well, you don't need to speak music. You need to speak emotion. Mm -hmm. And you tell me how you feel when you listen to it. They listen to music a lot more objectively, I believe, than I do. So stuff resonated with them and some stuff didn't. Mm -hmm. And that's how it goes. And there was a lot of, there was yeses, but there was a lot more no's than yeses. And for me that, I think I was at at a small disadvantage because I wasn't working with with video. I didn't have it as my primary artistic motivator mm-hmm. like I always do. So I had to think about these things and and through talking and visualizing what it was going to be. And that was it was a great challenge. And at the end we came up with something that I feel is is unique. It's a, it's a unique spin on the battle epic style of score that we hear in movies or that we hear on video games. And mm, they use yeah, a lot yeah. of that kind of music, that, that, that style, that genre of music for, for their games and for the, uh, for the other videos that they've produced. So that was definitely the motivator, but I wanted to try and put a little bit of a spin on it that gave it just a little bit more, maybe a little bit more detail. Just, I wanted something that the WSO could play and have some fun with that was still very much within the style, but just had a little tiny bit of a unique spin on it. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I think we came up with that. Well, that's, so, that just leaves us hanging for sure because I want to hear this piece. Yeah, and it's. it's <laughs> I want to be able to get it on the show and play it at some point. I, I think hope it would so. be great. Yeah, I hope that can happen. Mm-hmm. It's. Um, yeah, I'm quite proud of it. I'm quite proud of the first movement of it. And I think that's my favorite. I'm proud of it all, how it turned out. Mm-hmm. I'm always most proud when the people I'm working with, or in this case, working with and for, yeah. are happy. Well, that, when you hear the crowd tonight. Right. And that's, that's the world in bring... which I live. I, yeah. I am very much a. A, a creative, but I, I put the creative authority in other people's hands. I, mm-hmm. It's really is truly a collaboration. Yeah. And uh, I'm used to hearing no a lot. And then I, when I usually, at the end, I realize why, why I hear no. And it's because there's something else there that can be done to make it better. And that's what happened in this case. Although, you know, I, uh, it was, uh, it was all positive the whole time. It just, when when it, you're dealing with this special piece, and you know, back to the, your original question, you know, how did you feel when you when you got this? Well, you think about the legacy and history of hockey in this city, and how important it is to this community. And Winnipeg's a really interesting place. It's so diverse because you have these incredible hockey fans, but you also have these amazing artists and this culture that's here. And I think Kyle said it well in his clip that you're getting the same folks that are going to to WSO concerts and the ballet and to the museum and, and to the art gallery that you're getting that go to Jets games. It's really mm-hmm. one community and there's so much diversity. And so I wanted to do something that was fun and special as a piece of music, but I also know the pressure of hockey and the and the energy that surrounds this 
the so, Winnipeg Jets. So you're yeah. going to be if, if when the Jets win the cup, you're going to be a hero. I'm kind of absolutely. Hoping that well, even if, if they, they make the playoffs, if they make the playoffs, I'm taking full credit. You're taking full Just credit for the theme out, song. I'm absolutely inspiring them. Yeah, I and, agree. And if they if they don't make it to the playoffs, then we're going to blame Alexander. <laughs> it was the yeah. way he conducted the symphony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I just, because Alexander's a friend of mine and he is, uh, he's a big supporter of me and, and, and I'm a big supporter of his and mm-hmm. he was incre- incredibly enthusiastic. He and JF, mm-hmm. but Alexander ha- saw and gets the vision that I was embarking on. And we were in contact throughout the whole time and he'd hear rough versions of what I was working on. I just wanted to get his mm-hmm. head around it. And, um, he's a, I think we're really fortunate to have him here. I think he's a really enthusiastic, uh, very energetic maestro. And yes. We all know that about Alex. We, Alex. We, <laughs> sure, we sure do. And I think we're, like I say, I think we're really lucky to have him, but he was a pleasure to work with. We didn't have a lot of time to do this recording. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of, uh, scheduling related things we had to deal with and everybody stepped up and pulled it together and we had an hour to record this music and Alexander was familiar with the music the musicians weren't but they Mm -hmm. played it it was the challenge in this it wasn't necessarily uh, the music was that challenging to play it was the intention of it. it it was understanding what we were trying to do here understanding the the dynamics of what we're dealing with and the there's beauty, but there's a lot of aggression and it was trying to bring that out. And Alexander mm-hmm. did a great job in the very short time period of making that happen. And the WSO was impressive. Well, and tonight it all comes always. together. It sure does. Just a, a couple details. Uh, tonight, the game is at seven o'clock Winnipeg Jets home opener season opener against Carolina hurricanes. Uh, if you want to catch the video, be there by 6.30. I was talking with Kyle yesterday. He said 6.30, between 6.30, 6.45 is when they're going to uh, unveil the video and the song that was uh, written by my guest in the studio, uh, Sean Pierce, and also performed by the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra. You know what? Have a great time tonight. Welcome back thank to Winnipeg. You. Have a really, really fun time tonight. Oh, Soak it all in. Cause, and thanks for having me here. And I I'm just really glad they're not playing it. LA tonight because then you may have a tough yeah, time choosing where. <laughs> that's, it's, a, it's a tough one. <laughs> and I kid because the Jets are always the choice. Go Jets. Go. Yeah, thanks go again, Jets. Sean, for coming in. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it. it.